Now for something totally opposite. Need a little palate cleanser. Uh, this is a comedy called It Pays to be Ignorant. It ran from 1942 to 1951. It's a comedy spoof on quiz shows where a pan with a panel of experts, kind of like Jeopardy. In this case, the experts can't seem to answer the simplest of questions and keep going off on stupid tangents. It starred four performers who went by their real names, the frustrated host Tom Howard and his three clueless panelists, George Shelton, Lulu McConnell, and Harry McNaughton. These four actors ranged in age from 48 to 62 when this episode air, aired in September of 1944. Howard and Shelton were vaudeville performers in their past, and McNaughton and McConnell played in Broadway comedies and reviews. This show was broadcast during World War II, and there are two guest audience members from the service who are in the show. One was a man from the Army Air Corps, the predecessor to the Air Force. The other was a woman from something called the WAVES, or Women Accepted for Volunteer Emergency Service, which was a female division of the Navy. Uh, as is custom with this show, tonight's episode is titled by the first question that is asked. Why is marriage like taking a bath? Okay. Why is marriage like taking a bath? Because after you get used to it, it's not so bad. Correct. Pay that man eight dollars. What is an old maid? A yes woman who never got a chance to talk. Correct. Pay that man nine dollars because... It pays to be ignorant. A zany half hour with those masters of insanity. Harry McNaughton, George Shelton, and nail up girl Lulu McConnell. And featuring Doc Novick's orchestra. But now, here's the man who proves it pays to be ignorant, Tom Howard. Well, here we are again with that quiz program, only for people in their second childhood. We have a board of experts who think Yale College is where they make locks. First, we have the celebrated author, Mr. Harry McNaughton, who was just written a book entitled Seven New and Exciting Ways to Eat Garlic, or how to become strong. Well, here he is, Mr. Harry McNaughton. I have a poem, Mr. Howard. I imagine. <laughs> a farmer had a cow that he called Zephyr. She was really a beautiful heifer. But when he got near, the cow kicked off his ear. <laughs> and now the poor farmers are much deafer. I see, a masterpiece. Uh, if anyone tells you you can trust a cow, it's a bum steer. Aye, a bum steer. A very good, Mr. McNaughton. Next, we have a woman who was so fat it takes her two hours to dress because she has to slow down for the curves. A woman whose family has no background, but she has plenty. Here she is, the girdle grabber, or the, gir the grabber, or whatever, the Florham Park, Miss Lulu McConnell. Boy, my bridge work is slipping tonight. Uh, you know, Mr. Howard, I'm, I'm going to go to the movies tomorrow night. You are? And I got to get there early, so I'm thrilled. Uh, what's so thrilling about going to the movies? Well, they got a sign outside. Yeah? It says, servicemen, 25 cents. Yes? Well, and I want to get... Get there before they're all gone. Yeah, I see. That's a good idea. Okay, uh, next we have a man who the day he was born, the doctor said to his father, congratulations, I think it's a baby. A man who has been up the river so many times, his friends call him showboat. Here he is, Mr. George Shelton. Hey, you know, I got a brother-in-law up the river right now in jail. Uh-huh. And he don't like it. Isn't that too bad? He doesn't like it. No, they put him in a cell that leaks. It's full of water. The cell is full of water? Well, he wants me to come up and bail him out. Bail him out, right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, there's the expert, folks. There's the expert. Any resemblance between them and human beings is purely accidental. Here is the first question. Now, let's try hard and answer it. It's a little tricky, this first question, so be careful. Yes. I will read the poem to you. In the poem, there is hidden the name of a very popular city. A poem. A poem. See if you can tell me the name of the city. Here is the poem. There is a lady poor as a mouse, 
has a sign outside her house, washing done here every day, is what the sign has got to say. Now, what's the name of the city? What city? The city I mentioned in the poem. I didn't hear you mention any city. Uh, Mr. McNaughton, the name of the city is sort of hidden in the poem. Oh, how can you hide a city in a poem? That's so uh, silly. Mr. McNaughton, were you ever kicked in the head by a jackass? Yes. Messy, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, mess, messy, I imagine. Yes, I, I'll start all over again. Now listen to the poem. Yes. There is a lady poor as a mouse. What's the lady's name, Mr. Oh, Howard? Oh, shut up, you moron. Oh, what an odd name. And what an odd... Will you listen to the poem? There is a lady poor as a mouse, has a sign outside the house. Washing done here every day is what the sign has got to say. Now what city did I mention? Is it a large city, Mr. Howard? No, uh, all right, it's a large city. And you say the lady is poor? Poor as a church mouse. Church mouse. Oh, that's pretty poor. Yeah, yeah. Church mouse is always poor. Yeah, they've been hit pretty hard. Yeah, by the depression and everything. You know, I, I wonder what makes church mice so poor. Well, I guess because nobody ever thinks of bringing a piece of cheese to church with them. Yeah, that's uh, it. Mm -hmm. well, well, I don't logical. think it would hurt a person when they're going to church to take a piece of cheese and just zip it to the mice. No, that wouldn't hurt them, no. Do you, Mr. Sheldon? No, I do not. In fact, I think you should always take a piece of cheese with you when you go out. A piece of cheese? Yeah, you'll never know when you'll meet a rat. Uh, how do you do, Mr. Sheldon? Will you please get back to the question? What city is mentioned in the poem? There is a lady poor as a mouse, has a sign outside the house, washing done here every day. A lady does washing, I take it? Yes, 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 washing done. Now, what city is that? At least the lady is clean, isn't she? Oh, please. Well, that's right. No matter how poor you are, you can always be clean. Ain't this awful. That's what I always say. Must be awfully tiresome, you know, saying that all the time. Imagine always saying, no matter how poor you are, you can always be clean. No matter how poor you are, you can always be clean. No matter how poor oh, you are... Oh, will you cut it out, please? What is this? You know... I'm getting tired already. You are? You should be. Yeah. Suppose Patrick Henry stood up in Congress and said, no matter how poor you are, you can always be clean. Oh, but Patrick Henry didn't say that. How do you know he didn't say it? She was sitting in the gallery. I was not. I was at bowling that night. You were. <laughs> All right, please. Now let's get on here. Look, can we please answer the question? Yes. What was the question, Mr. Howard? No matter how poor you are, you can always... But, uh, wait a minute. It's about a city. I'll try once more. Lady poor as a mouse does washing. Washing done. Now, Mr. Sheldon, what city does that suggest to you? Now, concentrate. Yeah, I'll concentrate. Now, let me see. Lady poor as a mouse. You know, I don't seem to be able to fit the mouse in there. Well, never mind the Wait, mouse. Wait, I got it. I good, got it. Good, good. St. Louis. St. Louis? Sure. St. Louis Mousery. Thank you, thank you. And now for a change, let's hear from our contestants. We've invited two members of the studio audience up here on the stage. They can ask the experts a question. If they get an intelligent answer, we give them four pre-war white sidewall tires. If they don't, we give them two discarded soda straws. Now, who do we have first, Mr. Roberts? First tonight, Mr. Howard, we have Staff Sergeant Martin Goldberg of the United States Army Air Corps. Ah, uh, well, that's swell. Yeah, give him a round of applause, yeah. Yes, this is certainly a pleasure, Martin Goldberg. We are very glad to have you with us. Thank you for coming up. Now, how do you feel? I feel fine. Well, uh, you, you certainly look like you have quite a lot of decorations there, young fella, haven't you? Yes. Uh, uh, would you mind uh, telling us, what is that oak leaf cl cluster there? Uh, three of them, isn't it? Distinguished Flying Cross, and then there are three oak clusters. Uh, the Distinguished Flying Cross. Well, that deserves a hand. Yes, thank you. 
Yes, that's very, very nice. Yes, sir. Son, it looks like you've been around, and with all those decorations, remind me to show you my elk's tooth sometime. We're very glad uh, to have you with us. Now, would you mind tell us a little bit about yourself? Where's your hometown, would you care to tell us? Brooklyn, New York. Hey, Brooklyn, New York. Give them a round of applause. Yes, hooray for Brooklyn. Hey, I used to work in that town. Oh, stop, will you please? Yeah, I was. I was a sergeant in the dentist's office. Uh huh. You were a sergeant in the dentist's office? Yeah, I used to drill teeth. Oh, cut it out, please. Look, I say, wasn't that kind of boring? That kind of boring? Never mind, Mr. McNaughton. Yeah, sort of a mouth to mouth existence. <laughs> Look, please, gentlemen, we have a guest standing here. I say, Sergeant, you know, uh, Sergeant Goldberg, I was in the last war. Yes, and, well, I remember one night we gave a party for our p colonel, Colonel Barry. Colonel Barry. I was collecting tickets at the door when a lady and her daughter had arrived, and I said, sorry, madam, but you can't get in without a ticket. Yeah, what'd she say? She said, young man, we are the berries. <clears throat> well, I said, I don't care if you're the cat's pajamas. You can't get in without a ticket. Yeah, I see. I expected that. Nice couple, though. Yeah, he was right. Orders is orders. Oh, pay no attention to them, Martin Goldberg. It's just getting near their feeding time. Uh, what, did you, uh, what did you do before you entered the service? Just out of high school. Oh, out of high school. Well, isn't that fine? Yes. Well, you certainly have gone a long way, and I'm sure we're all very proud of you, and they're all proud of you in Brooklyn. We're very happy to have you with us. Yeah. What's your first name, honey? Martin. 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 Oh, isn't that a nice name? Yes. Oh, it's a pretty name. Okay. Ain't he cute? Yeah, he's a nice boy. Oh, he's cute as a button. He's so... Never mind, will you cut it out? He's not Frank Sinatra. Cut it out, will you? Yeah, ya? well, you can just call me Vanishing Cream. Vanishing Cream. I'm so soft and soothing. Yeah, and you're good to the last chin, too. Will you reach into the dunce cap there and pick out a question for us, Martin, please? J just any question you can get a hold of, and, and would you be kind enough to read the question right into the microphone, if you will? What season of the year follows summer? Well, thank you. That's very good. Did you hear the question, gentlemen? There are four seasons, spring, summer, autumn, and winter. Now, what season follows summer? Ah, uh, that's a trick question. I'm not going to fall for it. Fall? I say, uh, wait a minute, Mr. Shelton. Fall for it, you said. You, you practically answered the question. He did? Yeah. Uh, what did you say, Mr. Shelton? I said it was a trick question, and I wasn't going to go for it. No, you didn't say go for it. Mr. Howard, what is a gopher? <laughs> you know, you know, I'm a gopher. You're a gopher? Every girl I see, I gopher. <laughs> I go for I, <laughs> I don't get it. You don't get it. Mr. McNaughton, please. Why don't you bury yourself in a good book? Or better still, just bury yourself. Can anyone tell me about the seasons? Well, there's salt, vinegar, pepper. Never mind, never mind. What comes after summer? You know, Mr. Howard, I always hate to see the summer go, you know, you know? So do I. I had a wonderful time this summer. Stopped at the nicest hotel up in the mountains. Had a lovely view from the window, you know? One morning, I woke up, it was gone. What happened? She moved. She moved. The, there was a nice hotel where I was this summer, too. Oh, did you have a nice room? No, I lived in the bar. In the bar of the hotel? Couldn't you get a room? Not with a bar in it. Not with a bar, land sake. Look, the question is not about hotel, it's about seasons. Uh, you're not getting tired, are you, Martin? No. Well, uh, we'll, we'll, be in with, we'll be in with you in a minute there. Uh, uh fella. Then you can come over here and sit besides me. Want to come over here, Martin, and sit beside me? Never mind. Leave him alone. Martin, if you want to wait till after the program's over, I know a cute little place called the Open Door. Yeah, Miss McConnell, you couldn't get through an open door. Come on now, let's get on here. The question, let's get back to the question. Please, gentlemen, look, will you please answer it and answer it quickly? 
What season comes after summer? What season? Uh, why don't you let me put it another way? What season comes before winter? Now, how do you like that? Now, wait a minute. What you doing changing the question? I am not changing the question. I mean, we can't answer the question, you know, if you keep changing it all the time. Look, the same answer will do for both questions. I didn't know we had two questions. There is not two questions. I just phrased the question differently. What was the first question? It was about a woman who took a mouse to church with her. It was not. You know, the last time I went to church, I was insulted. You were insulted in church? Yeah, as soon as I came in, the usher said to me, pew. <laughs> now let's wrestle with the next question. Here it is. Now pay attention. I will sing a few bars of a song. You are to tell me what kind of hair the girl has that is mentioned in the song. Professor Novick. Could you give me an arpeggio? And give me an aspirin. Never mind. <laughs> Casey would waltz with the strawberry blonde And the band played on He'd You know, like Mr. Howard singing is out of this world. Yeah, yeah I wish he was out with it. the band played but on his Loaded, but it his nearly brain exploded. Was so loaded, the poor girl would shake with the alarm. Exploded, the poor girl would shake with the alarm. What a voice like that! He, he ought to go places. The girl yeah, I can only with think the of one place. Curl, I know that place. And the band My wife gave it to me this morning. On. Splendid, bravo! <laughs> Splendid, very nice. Thank you, music lovers. You know, I could listen to Mr. Howard singing until the cows come home. You could listen to me sing till the cows come home. Till the cows come home. Yes, but when the cows come home, I'd rather listen to them. Okay, okay. Besides, you get milk besides. You get milk besides, yeah. That's just utter nonsense. All right, now let's get on. Uh, Mr. Howard. Yeah? So do you know... All love me, why not take all of me? Miss McConnell, I need a 10-ton truck to take all of you. <laughs> now look, what kind of hair did the girl have in the song? The girl that waltzed with Casey. Was that the Casey that went to bat and struck out? Hmm, he must have played for the Chicago Cubs. Yeah, oh, well, wait a minute there. That's terrible. You know... <laughs> You know, my father was a baseball player. Your father was a baseball player? Yes. And you were his first error. Now let's get on with it. Uh, um, I, I went to a baseball game last week for the first time. Yeah? How'd you like it? Oh, it was so... just too busy. Yeah? I would get up to see where the ball went, and then some guy would holler, Down in front! Sit down in front! Well, yeah, what'd you say? I told him I didn't bend that way. You didn't bend that way? Ah, oh, please. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Yes, we have another guest, right, Mr. Roberts? Why, yes, we have Mr. Howard. And now I should like to introduce to you storekeeper, third class, Mary Howie of The Waves. Well, 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 how do you do? Yes, give a round of applause. Uh, good evening, Miss Howie. How do you feel this evening? Oh, just wonderful. Well, you certainly do look delicious, I will say that. <laughs> Where is your hometown, would you care to tell us? Elizabeth, New Jersey. Oh, Elizabeth, New Jersey. Well, uh, what do you know about that? Elizabeth. Elizabeth. I have a girl that lives over there. Oh, you do? Used to be my girl. Nice girl, but she don't seem to like me anymore. She doesn't? No. I wonder how I could get her to make her love me again. How you can get her to make her love you. It's very easy, Mr. Shelton, old boy. Just call on me, you know. Yeah? Or rather, and I'll tell you what to see. Yeah? What do you do? You call on her with some flowers, a box of candy. Then you go in the parlor, sit on the divan, and then... 
You put out the light. Yeah, what then? Then you sent for me. Okay, cut it out. Now let's get on here. Uh, we're very glad to have you. Pay no attention uh, to them. Now, wh wh what did you do before you entered the service, Miss Howie? As a comptometer operator. Uh, you were a, a, a what? A comptometer operator. Well, is that so? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, that, uh, whatever that is, that must be nice work. Uh, what is the duty of uh, one of those uh, operators there? A barometer? No, no, don't you try to say it if I can't. Well, wh what do you do? Some kind of a, what is it, an intricate machine or something? Oh, yes, it's very intricate. It is. It does all the work for you. Oh, it does the work for you. It does. Has it got brains? I suppose it does. Well, I'd wish you'd send it over here for McNaughton and Sheldon here. Well, we're very, very glad to have you with us. Uh, would you kindly do us a favor and reach into the dunce cap there and pick out a question for us, please? I surely can. Any question you can get a hold of. Hey, Mr. Howard, doesn't she look sweet in that, your uniform? Oh, yes, she does. She does. Uh, doesn't she look smart? Oh, indeed, she looks so smart. You know, I try to look smart and neat, but I have dishpan hands. You have. You have a dishpan face, too. Now, if you'll help us out by reading a question there in the microphone, we'll be very, very happy. Who was Queen of England during the Victorian era? Uh, that's very good, yes, now. Who was Queen of England during the Victorian era? Did you hear that now, everybody? I'm afraid we're going to have a lot of trouble with that baby. <laughs> Oh, boy. Uh, m m Mr. McNaughton, you should know that question. Oh, indeed I do. I know the question very well, Mr. Howard. Yes? I'm afraid I don't know the answer. Oh, I see. Yes, I, I was afraid of that. Miss McConnell, do you know who was Queen of England during the Victorian era? Uh, no, nope. Uh, that was before my time. I see. Uh, uh, Miss McConnell, there wasn't any time before your time. Say, Mr. Howard, who was king at that time? What do you mean, who was king, king of England? King of the, yeah. You mean Victoria's husband. You, he was not the king, he was the prince consort. I was at a concert last night. Oh, cut it out. Oh, it was so lovely. Oh, yeah? And what did they play? Bach. They played Bach at the concert. Bach. I never played that. I like gin rummy. So do I, but it's hard to get gin. Hard to get gin. Gentlemen, will you please concentrate on the question? It's not about music. I'm talking about the Victorian era. It lasted from 1837, I believe, to 1901. Uh, that was around the gay 90s, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. That was about around the time of the gay 90s. You know, those were the good old days when women wore skirts that trailed on the ground. Yeah. And we used to trail the skirts. I remember those days. I used to wear a bustle. Yeah, don't you think it's about time you took it off? Ah, uh, those good old days, you know, when Big Ben was a watch. You remember those too, don't you, McNaughton? Way back, yes. All right, then, is there any chance of getting back to the question again, gentlemen? Uh, yes, go right ahead. Do you remember the question? Something about, um, yeah, about Big Ben. Oh, please, cut it out. Who was the queen during the Victorian era? The Victorian era. Now, that ought to be quite simple if you concentrate. She was queen of England. Queen of England. Yes, very popular and a very well-liked queen. Queen of England. Any other thing, any other little hint you could give me? I could, I could. A little hint I guess I could give you. I could tell you, Mr. Sheldon, that the Victoria Hotel was named after her. Oh, I got it, I got it. Good. Helen Hayes. Helen Hayes? <laughs> Well, I meant to thank you, Mary Howie, for being with us. It was very sweet of you to come up here, and may I wish you a lot of luck, wherever you may be. You know that Ken Roberts does speak the English language fluidly, doesn't he? Fluidly, yes. You know, I'm going to ask him for his phonograph right after the broadcast. For his phonograph, because he speaks the English language fluidly. You eat fluidly, too, don't you? No, not necessarily. I'm on a diet. I see. Come over and water my lawn. You're on a diet. 
I'm gonna dye it pink, I think. Uh huh. Well, let, let's get on here and let me correct you, Mr. Sheldon. You don't mean phonograph. You mean his autograph. Oh no, no, Mr. Howard. I beg to differ, old man. An autograph is something that the Western Union sends you. Now you're way off, Mr. McNaughton. That's a telegram. No, nope, the Western Union sends you a paragraph, ten words. I see. Well, let me inform you, a paragraph is just a subdivision in writing. No, let me inform you, Mr. Howard, you're wrong. A paragraph is an animal with a long neck. An animal with a long neck. You were... Wait a minute, that's a giraffe. An odd-looking creature with shapeless legs, shapeless body, and the only sound it makes is a stupid croak. Now we're back to Miss McConnell again. Yes, well, I see it looks like our time is up, so we'll just have to call it off until this time next week. Now, here is that fine fellow, Mr. Roberts, to inform you that... It pays to be ignorant. Be here next week when it's proven again by Tom Howard, George Selton, Lulu McConnell, and Harry McNaughton. This is Ken Roberts speaking. This is the Armed Forces Radio Network. Okay, all right, let's see, who did what here? Where are we? The panelists. The uh, haughty Harry McNaughton was played by our very own Andre Dixon. <laughs> Lulu McConnell was played by Allison Byhan. George Shelton was played by Jay Somerville. Uh, losing my place here. Uh, okay, Martin Goldberg was played by Tom Wilkins. And Mary Howie was played by Sue Gajinski. Is that everybody? Oh, and uh, the announcer was John Byhan. Thank you, announcer. And Jacob Palka was Tom Howard. All right, this wraps up our evening. Thank you very much. I want to also bring the attention to our tech gods here, John Gelsomino and Lorenzo Cordova. And special thank you to Vera Wilt and the Riverside Township Board of Trustees who fund our fun here. Thank you. Everyone applaud. So, I think, John, are you the director, Nick? Okay. Wait, I, I just have one more thing to say. This month, not only was our sound guy, who spends hours putting all the sound together, he, did, he selected the scripts, he directed the, the rehearsals we had. Let's hear it once more for our Marty. Thank you, Eddie. So next month's director is John. Tell us what's happening next month, John. Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming out and treachering this terrible rain or whatever weather we have going on outside. Uh, Next month is going to be a good one, Uh, so mark it down your calendars. February 28th, we're doing two really fun shows. Uh, The first one will probably be our Tarzan. When we have Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle, the title of this uh, production we're doing is The Man from Another World, which is a very fun one. And then another fun one, our second show will be Mr. and Mrs. Blanding. And that'll be the first anniversary of moving in. It'll be the title of that show. So be here next week, February 28th, same time, same place. We hope to see all your smiling faces. And then I'm going to hand it over to Marty one more time. Next month, of course. All right. Everyone have a good night. There's candy over there. And uh, we'll see you next time around, hopefully. Good night, everybody. Bye.